Hey, what's up everybody? It's TR with Earth Angel Mushrooms. I'm gonna make a video and go over um, specifically cook time and cooking spawn. Because about 98% of people that I talk to, especially new people, are under cooking their spawn. I'll briefly cover how I hydrate my spawn, or my grain rather. A tankless hot water heater. So all of the rain tankless hot water heaters can have, or most of them I should say, you can buy an aftermarket chip that brings it up to 185. So if you're bigger than the scale of just the pot on the stove, um, get a tankless. Now granted, it's not boiling water, and I have a little bit of a process that I go through to get the proper moisture in my grain. I'll make another video exactly on that. But tankless hot water heater, 185 degree water, and I use 55 gallon drums to hydrate the grain, which are right over there and they have the bubble wrap insulation. So this video is gonna be for uh, specifically cook time. Uh, everybody starts off and they've read 15 PSI for an hour and a half. I'm gonna show you 15 PSI and I'm gonna show you longer than an hour and a half and I'm gonna show you temperatures. Um, this is how my bags are in the autoclave right now. So we have two bags. We got flap to flap, and these are three tea bags. Then I have a space. Then I have two more bags, space, two more bags. So every row has six, and, and then we have multiple rows going down the basket. So I left these out just for you guys. Let's go over to the boiler room. I don't think I've ever made a video in the boiler room. You're gonna have to go through the barn section here. It's gonna get dark. Might be a little loud in there. But I wanted to show you guys how most of you are overcooking. Now you saw my spacing. I have two bags, space, space all the way around those two bags. So here I'm in my boiler room, here's my boiler. I have a 25 horse boiler. So it's basically a million BTUs. I'm cooking, of course it's got uh, pressurized. It's, it's a high pressure boiler, so 100 PSI. Anyway, so give me the grand sewer. Here's my homemade cooler. Got the cool bot. So I just framed out the walls, spray foamed it, and then put um, fiberglass over the spray foam. Anyway, I'll get back on track. So I got the boiler, feed water tank that feeds the boiler, lots of lines, um, everybody thinks that boilers and setting one of these up is complex, including myself whenever I started. Um, until you see it done and you start using it, and you're like, that's it? It's really easy. Anyway, so I'm going to climb up this ladder and show you my pressure gauge. Hopefully, just above, so 15 and a half PSI. All right, I started at 12 o'clock noon. It is now 3.30. Now granted, there is a come up time. And the come up time is about 50 minutes. So I'm at over three and a half hours right now. Minus that 50 minutes of come up time. In a pressure cooker, it is, uh, your come up time is really fast. So let, let's say it takes uh, 15 minutes. Um, so let's say, let's go back to that 90 minutes at 15 PSI thing. So you know I'm over three and a half hours total time, so over two and a half at 15 PSI. And you saw my spacing, now I'm going to show you my temp gauge, 238. So, we are at, let's just round it to two and a half hours at 15 PSI, and I'm at 238, and you saw my spacing. Now I know, because I was one of them, that you guys cram as much grain into a pressure cooker as you possibly can. And it just makes sense. You wanna be able to get more grain, more spawn out with the less amount of work. But, the more packed in they are, that temperature that I just showed you is going to be way lower. 
because you have all of the grain insulating um, the other grain. So it's gonna take about another hour. So it's about 4.15 total time. So whatever 50 minutes is minus that um, to get up to that 250. Um, so 98% of you people out there that I hear talk anyway, that are still doing that 90 minute malarkey, <laughs> it's wrong. It's just wrong. I've been cooking with probes for a few years now and that 90 minutes is just garbage. Um, if you had a vacuum system on your autoclave, it might be different, um, but most people do not. Um, so you can see the temp and you saw the pressure and you can only believe me in that I'm attempting to help you guys um, that you need to be cooking your grain longer. You need to be cooking your grain longer and you need to be spacing out your grain bags in your pressure cooker or your autoclave if you don't have probes. The thing is you get caught up in this whole thing of reading something online. You need to question it and then verify it. When I put those probes in, I had been cooking in the autoclave for a while and you can get away with it um, not knowing the picture, not seeing what's going on in there, um, but it's intermittent. You can't replicate it. You'll pick up contamination and when you're cooking spawn, when you're cooking grain at that hour and a half, let's say that it, the internal temp reaches 200, which is right on that cusp of being enough to kill off the bacteria. You get much lower than that and it's bacteria central. Now the fungi, it dies at a way lower temperature. So you'll never pick that up. You'll pick up bacteria, but then with that bacteria, you'll end up seeing mold. Um, so to get those internal temperatures you need, you're going to have to increase your cook time. I can only uh, show you guys, uh, and hopefully you believe me on the time frame. Um, I can't really prove that unless we sat here for that long, which I don't think anybody wants to do. But uh, hopefully this helps. Um, for those of you who pick up intermittent uh, contamination on your grain like I used to, and I couldn't figure out why when I was doing everything that I thought was good to go, it's probably because some batches you're killing off everything, the other batches you're not. If you can get temperature probes, get temperature probes, then there is never a question whether you have the proper temperature or not. Um, and take notes so you know exactly what's going on. We still take notes. I still have my employees take notes on the cooks. I oversee the cooks because I feel that it's very, very important. And I don't want anybody to bring themselves on steam. But, uh, so I let it get up to temperature. Then I will let them let the steam out of the autoclave slowly so the bags don't burst. Um, and then I have a HEPA filter plumbed into my autoclave. There's the line. We are right next door to my lab and there is a HEPA filter right on the other side of that wall. And it comes down here. I'll open this valve and kick my fan on to my HEPA and blow air in there. Now, even when the autoclave is reading zero, you know, it's been up at 15 PSI, you know, come down to zero. It's still all steam. If I open the autoclave door at that point, you have a bunch of cold air runs in the bottom and all of that residual steam comes out, plus in the bags. So I will allow the steam out, we call it a bypass. Let me go over here, see if you can see it. It's getting loud in here. That's the bypass over there. It comes off of a condensate line, because we have condensation of steam, condensing water, it goes to the bottom. The condensate line all go and drain out. See them over there. Um, 
So at the end of the cook, I crack the bypass, which lets the steam out the bottom, and it goes out on top of the roof up there. Then when I'm at zero, I will open this valve, turn on my HEPA fan, and push HEPA filtered air inside my autoclave, which then forces the residual steam out and allows me to be able to open the autoclave door without steam filling the clean room. Um, trying to think if I missed anything. I'm gonna try to do a better job about answering questions on my uh, comments on YouTube. So if I did leave something out or if I was unclear about something, which I probably was, leave me a comment um, and I'll try to respond. Hope everybody is having a good week. Stay motivated, keep growing mushrooms, and we will talk to you later.